I'm going to go up to the top here and I want to play with my resolution a little bit. I want to, I don't need this huge 1080 uh, resolution that I have right now. I want to kind of make it more of a square render. I don't need all this extra dead space. Um, what I want to do is I want to come up to main camera. Let's see if it's in here. No, it's not in here. Let's go to render. Somewhere it's in here. So under main camera, down here where it says lens, there's a safe frame. I'm going to click on that and that tells me, you know, what, when you actually render something out of Marmoset, you know, where is it going to render? What's it going to make an image or a, a, a little movie out of? And again, there's a lot of dead space. So to change the resolution, you need to come up to capture and then you go, need to go to settings. And then right here, you can change it from different, you know, if you want to do 1080 render or 1080 video. Uh, I want to change this to like a, a 2K render like that. And again, there's presets you can play with right here too. Uh, here's your anti-aliasing. So 16 is the default. If you want a little bit more anti-aliasing, you can crank that up and again this happens when you save the image and then what format do you want do you want a format that has a transparency you definitely want to pick one of these if you don't you can pick ping or JPEG ping is gonna be fine and if you want actually a transparent background you can turn on transparency and I'll put that in there uh, again here's the video quality same kinda of thing pretty much this uh, H264 video compression is great just keep it there and then the quality you can crank it up to 100 and then you can just hit OK and that just sets the settings so now I've got this safe uh, frame knowing where my render is going to be so that's a good guide there um, if you go back to also capture there's also show output folder in here this is where you can send your stuff uh, to it so you can set that directory and say where is it going right now it's going to be sending uh, by default it goes to the desktop of your computer so you can check there um, okay so now that I've kind of dialed in on my lights a little bit um, I want to pl start playing with that camera and now field of view is the, one of the strongest uh, parts of the of the camera so here you can kind of play with your focal length how close you are so right now we're at field of view of 50 that's about a 55 uh, or 25 millimeter now if you come down you can go to focus and now you can turn your depth of field on so click that on and your object automatically becomes blurry and then what you do is you play with the focal distance back and forth until you find where your object starts to come in focus. So right about 3.5 for me is where it's going to work. Again, it might be different for you. And I'm just going to land it right here. And you can see this little strip running through it. And that's our plane of critical focus right there. And then we can play with the near blur, which is this corner right here, totally out of focus. I can extend it or contract it back to the point where there is none right there same thing with the far blur slider I can crank that all the way to the back so I'm gonna crank it all the way back until I see a little bit of blurness on this bottom corner so I want a little bit of depth of field still there and then how broad is the depth of field is where this uh, max broca uh, size is going to help you with so if you want this to be a really sharp depth of field uh, where the transition between sharpness and blurriness is really quick or do you want it to be more broad so you kind of have to play around with it and you don't really see the results until you start doing some renders of, of it to, to see where this really lands because the viewport doesn't do I would say not uh, an excellent job at it but it's pretty darn close. 
So you definitely have to play with it. There it goes. So go ahead and play with that depth of field. See what you like there. And then if you want, you can play with the lens flares. These are just, you know, bells and whistles and stuff there. Uh, I don't do too much of that. Uh, what really is cool is these post effects. If you come down here, there's a bunch. You can play with the overall exposure. You can crank that up. I'll leave, I'll leave that at one for now. You can play with the overall contrast a little bit. Uh, you can even play with the saturation and desaturate it if you want. So I'm just going to over crank it just a slight there. You can give it a little bit of sharpness just like in Photoshop. So you can sharpen up those details a little bit more. I always like doing that. You can even add a little bit of a bloom effect. So this little highlight that we have up top here, you can tell it to really, you know, go nuts. So you can tell it eh, a little bit right here. And then there's this slight bloom or you can crank it up. But it usually makes it look a little foggy when you do that. So you have to kind of play with it. And you can even change the color. Vignetting. I always like throwing a little bit of vignetting in. It just darkens up the corners a little bit so you can concentrate on the middle. And I like playing with the softness. So I always add a little bit of that. But in the process of doing that, sometimes your exposure drops. So I usually go back and crank that up. And then grain. So this is adding film grain. So if I crank it up, you can really see it. So I like coming in here and adding just a little bit. Just adds a little bit more sense of realism. And then I'll drop the sharpness just like that. And now it's starting to come in really well. Um, again, play with that focal distance in the near and, and far blurs, and you'll, you'll start seeing how good that's going to make your renders it sent, it give a sense of realism. Uh, I like it a lot. All right, so I've gone through. I've kind of dialed in a few things. Let's, uh, let's do a render of it and see how this is starting to look. So what you're going to do is going to go to capture and you just hit image and that's going to send it straight to the desktop by default and I'll just click it and there it is so you can see it's slightly different so you can see there's a little bit more blur happening here and here than it is in the viewport so again that's playing with your far and near uh, sliders on your depth of field to really dial that in. So let's go back and my far, I'm just going to crank that back just a little bit and the broke size, I'm just going to crank that back and then the near, I'm just going to crank that back just a little bit and then I'm going to re-render that. So I'll just hit image, you can do image and open, it'll render it and it should automatically open it in your default uh, image viewer set up on your operating system and that looks pretty good there too so I'm pulling it back but again it'll take a couple attempts to get your final result but that's starting to look really really good so that's how you kinda start using Marmoset to bring in your object set up your textures do some basic lighting using the preset HDRs and playing with the lens effects to get a really good uh, end result for your render. So go ahead and play with it. Uh, I've showed you how to save your images out. Just hit image or you can do image open. Uh, if you get, if you want to make a video or a little turntable, uh, here's the video option. It'll, you click it, it'll start making the video. The presets for that are right here to do it. And if you wanted something to do like a little bit of a turntable, uh, what you can do is select the object, hit the turntable option, and pretty much it's pretty much set for 10 seconds. So the timeline set for 10 seconds. Just hit the play, and there it is. There's your, you know, just kind of move this around a little bit, and there's your turntable. If you ever wanted to make a movie, it's just that easy to set it up for your scene. And again, maybe you need to change the lights or something like that for the turntable. I didn't set that up for this, but it's pretty easy to do. And then you just go back to image and just make video and it'll send it to whatever directory you set up. So hopefully you guys have learned what you need to learn from this and going through this whole 
process of photogrammetry to final render. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.